Well, old boy, it's time for a cyberpunk upgrade. You served me well over the last 12 years. What the heck? Everything is out of stock. Let me try the used market. They want $900 for a $400 card? $200 for an RX 580? Wait, 580 is going for 250. How much could I get for my system? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, Batman. Hell yeah. My friends, PC building kind of sucks right now. It hasn't been this laborious to find a GPU since Shouty Brett made his debut back at the end of 2017. Which CPU, which graphics card, which motherboard do I need to buy in my budget? Buying PCs right now just straight up hurts. So today we've got a build guide to show you how you can spec out and build a $750 full gaming setup, as well as what upgrades we'd recommend since there is a bit of compromisation that went into this setup. No more compromise than you've done on your New Year's resolutions though. Bruh. Now, while this video is all about getting you the best bang for your buck for your gaming system, your best bang for buck shopping tool while you're out on the internet is today's video sponsor, Honey. It's the best bang for your buck since it's absolutely free. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Honey. Online shopping is kind of the only thing that most people are doing right now, and Honey is such a useful tool to have when you're out on the interwebs trying to buy stuff and get a good deal on it. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. Here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches the coupons for that site. And if Honey finds a working code, you'll watch the prices drop. My dad recently called me up and asked me if I had any discount codes at a specific website. And I told him, no, try out Honey. Join honey.com forward slash UFD tech. And he ended up saving over $100, which actually he's part of the over $54,000 in savings that have been had by UFD Tech viewers. And Honey supports all kind of retailers from tech and gaming sites like Newegg to clothing brands and even food delivery. It's free and it works with whatever browser you use. So go to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD Tech. Big thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. And again, it's joinhoney.com forward slash UFD Tech to start saving money out on the internet in the best way possible, my friends. So the entire setup that's featured here today was actually selected with help from my Twitch stream. Be sure to follow us over there to participate in the PC part picker contest on Mondays and the PC builds on Fridays so you don't miss the origin of all of these builds. Twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. If you're building a PC, I need to know what. Okay, that's how this is gonna work. I wanna celebrate with you. But for the PC build, we decided to go with a solid foundation with good strong bones, a healthy gut, a fortified intestine tube to make sure that when the PC building scene is back to its sane, normal Paul Rudd self, you'll be 100% good to go with upgrading the GPU since that's kind of the hardest hit section of the market at the moment. So an i3-10100, ASRock H410M, and 16 gigabytes of Team Group Elite RAM make it so that even up to an RTX 3060 Ti, you'll have a completely healthy, non-bottlenecked path to the hopeful future of non-gobbled graphical goodness when Nvidia and AMD get their decks together. Together. Then we have a one terabyte XPG NVMe SSD and a CV650 80 plus bronze power supply to round out the build to give you enough electron juice to feed a hungrier system and enough spare bits to enjoy half of the next Warzone update. The case, the Cooler Master Masterbox NR400 was chosen because it's great price at the time, $35 after a mail and rebate. Right now it's a bit pricier at 55 bucks. So unless you have an extra $20 in your budget, it may not be the right choice, but with a full mesh front panel a front intake and rear exhaust fans included and room for four expansion slots on your micro ATX motherboard makes it a pretty solid choice. Also, some versions have this optical drive slot, which is kind of an eyesore, but for 35 bucks, I'm not gonna really complain. Now rounding out the rest of the setup, the key focus here definitely has to be this monitor. This LG Ultra Gear is 24 inches at 1080p at 144 hertz with FreeSync. At $150, it's the more affordable of the high refresh rate gaming monitors and definitely, again, allows for you to grow into the overall setup with this frame dispensing panel once the market homeostasizes. Now the peripherals in this setup 
or probably the thing that I can go either way on. It was just mostly chosen for its affordability. And in order to just not get a garbage headset, we went with a refurbished Corsair HS35. I've personally used the wireless cousin of the HS35 for over two years, and they've held up quite well over daily use. The more scaled down version should give you ample earball tickling to keep you satisfied with your music and spatially aware enough to know where the enemy is going to murder you from next. The TT Esports keyboard and mouse is really just a bare budget sufficient setup that'll allow you to play the video games, have enough blue light flash to stimulate your toddler minded friends, and then move the cursor on the screen so fast that you can cause a global extinction event. Mm -hmm. But for 36 bucks for both, it's kind of hard to steer wrong. If you need a mouse pad for your setup, you can grab one of these a three pack for eight bucks. And then the only thing not really mentioned that you should check out maybe grabbing is a Wi-Fi adapter for like 15 bucks since the motherboard doesn't have anything besides ethernet. So I've been avoiding talking about the GPU like Wesley Snipes avoids the IRS, but let's bury the blade and daywalk into it so it doesn't seem like I'm frosting you out on this one. So now after the rest of the setup is all said and done, we're looking at a $668 price tag, which leaves us about $85 for the GPU. At the time, that gave us the four gigabyte PowerColor RX 550 Red Devil. Right now, it leaves us with even less. The RX 550 appears to be pulling in closer to $100 on the new market. On the used market, if you wanna shift that $100 into a graphical device, you're looking at getting around an RX 570 or 1063 gig on a good deal, which is why we settled harder than my parents' hopes after I told them I was gonna become a YouTuber. The RX 550 isn't even good, but it's sufficient enough to let you play all the games that you want now, as long as you can handle having crap right now in order to get good later on. Something, something, delayed gratification is good for your soul, etc., etc. So now let's get into the benchmarks and then have a chat about what you can change about this setup to get more out of it. Testing all of the games at 1080p lowest settings reveals that the RX 550 is just kind of a hot wheel in the gaming industry. So all of these games are tested at the lowest setting on 1080p, a mixture of esports titles and the latest hot games to come out. So let's start off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla giving us a 25.3 FPS average. Borderlands 3 was 34.9, getting us over that 30 mark. Fortnite is actually pretty not bad at 85.8 .8 FPS. Crisis Remastered is technically playable, coming in at 35. COD Warzone, not as good as Fortnite because it never was going to be. 37 FPS is where we left off there. Valorant came in at over 223 FPS average. Death Stranding, 27.6. GTA 5 came in at 113. Horizon Zero Dawn came in at 27.2. And Red Dead Redemption 2 came in at nearly 30, 29.3. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a little older, but still kind of relevant, 41.8 FPS. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, 23.3. The Witcher 3, almost 30, 29.2 FPS there. And then Cyberpunk 2077, unplayable on basically everything, giving us a toasty, half cinematic 12.7 FPS frame rate. So while wow, that was a hot mess, dropping the 720p actually upgrades us to like radio flyer level performance with this PC. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 37.9 FPS. Borderlands 3, 55.2. Fortnite got 146.8, my friends. Crisis Remastered, 69.9.7. COD Warzone, almost hitting that 60 FPS average, 56.4. Valorant, again, not really bottlenecked by the GPU, 237. Death Stranding came in at 47.2. GTA 5 at 155.6. Horizon Zero Dawn at 44.3. Red Dead Redemption 2, 45.2. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 67.4. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Actually still it kind of sucked, but that's just because EA put a terrible engine in this thing. So 24.2 FPS. The Richer 3 was at 55.9 and Cyberpunk 2077 nearly, nearly got us to cinema levels with 22. Point two. Now I wanna say that all of the benchmarks that I actually saw on screen were directly recorded from the PC. We're having a little issue with our capture card like auto enabling HDR. So some of the colors looked a little off, but the frame rate is exactly what we experienced during benchmarking for you. But with those benchmarks, 30 to 60 FPS isn't really out of the reach of possibility right now. You just need to be okay with your gaming experience looking like this. 
But Fortnite, GTA 5, and Valorant all take use of the high refresh rate on this LG monitor at 720p, which I would argue is more important than having the resolution set to 1080p. So some other various performance notes. Temps were actually really good. The stock cooler on the Intel chip, while being no bigger than my sense of shame, actually managed to give us around a 57C average, and the GPU stayed to right around 60 degrees Celsius. The SSD also has plenty of Kerchu with three gigabytes per second read and 2.6 gigabyte per second writes, and Cinebench gave us a single core score of 177 with a multi-core score of 873. So listen, as I mentioned, the key trade-off that we made here was building up a system around a lack of a GPU and just hoping you'll have more of a budget for one later. Essentially, we're the Broncos in Super Bowl 50 and hoping that our defense will carry us through and Peyton Manning doesn't toss too many interceptions. Look, I brought you a potion and it's gonna work great because it'll make you run and you brought your oh. potion, right? But listen, I get it if you want to grab a faster GPU now. I'd actually recommend compromising on the monitor, picking up something like the Acer SB220Q 75Hz monitor that we've reviewed previously, you can check out the review right up there, will be a great option and free up about $50 more to spend on the card, which will put us in the 1066 gigabyte region. Or if you get someone who isn't keeping up with the fact that they can overcharge in this current economy, potentially even a 1070. I've seen them go for about 150 bucks on Macari. It'll allow for faster frame rates, but it'll be at the cost of only being able to experience them at 75 Hertz as opposed to 144. Also, the Intel platform that we put everything on will give you the ability to swap out for a 10400 if you need more cores, or wait for Intel to drop Rocket Lake at the end of March and upgrade to the latest and greatest. But listen, overall, this setup is kind of like going to the University of Florida and getting a religion degree. The overall institution sure is respectable, but you're not gonna get much of a job after you're done. But thankfully, we're in our freshman year and have plenty of time to switch our major before we go 50 grand in debt and our parents wonder if they should have just given up on this in high school. Just wait a month, two, maybe six, and cop a nicely priced GPU once these companies sort out their supply issues and you'll be well positioned to take full advantage of everything we've prepared this system with. But again, this was trying to buy completely new. We'll have a couple PC builds coming up in the next few weeks that focus more on the used market and show you how to optimize your performance in a few different price brackets. So make sure you get subscribed to UFD Tech so you don't miss any of those videos. And again, follow us over on Twitch so you know before everybody else does. But what do you think of this setup? What would you have changed or adapted to get more out of it? Let me know down below in the comments. But whatever deal you think you can get, why don't you guarantee that the deal is the best around with Honey, today's video sponsor. It installs in just two clicks and is completely free. Don't forget to check them out at joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. And with that, I'm Brett with the UFD tech channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, my friends.